Welcome everyone to the Vision Facilitator Training for District 5320. We call this training information because uh, we are not actually doing the uh, activities associated with each of the positions and so uh, that will that will be the actual uh, live training which will which will follow um, so uh, this will give you plenty of information to understand what uh, vision facilitator uh, does and uh, how the program goes along I'm going to be going fairly rapidly uh, through this information for a couple of reasons first we normally take about four hours to train um, this information I only have about an hour and a half so again going through it kind of uh, rapidly but you do need to understand all of this information the second reason is because I am recording the webinar and uh, that'll make it available to you to review periodically so that uh, it's not uh, you can skip through to different portions of it and whatnot so uh, so it's not an information overload as much as it seems like it is as, as you go through it the first time so let's get started in 2011 2012 the RI president was uh, Kylan Banerjee and he created what he called the change maker award uh, he encouraged clubs to create a three-year strategic plan which would be identifying specific annual and long-term goals now the importance of this is it's the first time that our efforts as vis vision facilitators was officially recognized by Rotary International it was sort of a, a grassroots organization up until that point and it really opened the eyes of a lot of clubs as to the importance of this type of a program of, of, of setting goals and and uh, why that's important uh, for Rotary clubs as well as businesses so our agenda today includes an overview of the visioning uh, program it's also going to uh, we're going to go through team member roles and responsibilities then we're going to uh, walk you through the actual club visioning event and then we'll get into the real specifics of each uh, of the vision facilitation and each of the roles of uh, really into specifics of the roles at the beginning part will just sort of be an overview and then at the end I'll set it up uh, I'll give you information to where you can contact me for questions by the way my name is Kim DeBrew I'm the district 5320 training director for 2014-15 and I have been the visioning chairperson uh, since the beginning in 2007 so what is vision facilitation well it is basically just long-range planning for Rotary Clubs in the course of this we're going to be creating a vision for the club for the next few years anywhere from three to five years and helping them take the steps necessary to uh, achieve that vision the vision that they create now there's an international vision facilitation council and the mission of that council is to have organized dedicated and trained Rotarians guiding a Rotary Club to better envision its future well now let's take this apart a little bit organize that's the part I do I organize it for you uh, and, pre and and pass it off to you so that it is in an organized fashion that we can then uh, present it to the clubs in an organized fashion dedicated and trained Rotarians guess what guys that's you that's me that's you uh, and and we're going to be guiding the Rotary clubs to be able to envision their future uh, that's all it is that's their mission and that's what we're here to do so it's a Chinese poem that goes like this go to the people live among the people learn from them start with what they know and build on what they have but of the best leaders when their task is accomplished their work is done the people will say we have done it ourselves that's what we're there to do folks to let them know that they've done it themselves and that we're just facilitating it for them you know some clubs are afraid uh, that when we arrive we're gonna actually begin telling them what the district wants them to do or be 
but we're not doing that. We're using their ideas. We're never instructors. We're only facilitators of the information that the clubs share with us. We all know clubs that have had the same secretary or the same treasurer for many, many years. How often did these individuals, that secretary or that treasurer, actually run the club in spite of what the president's trying to do? Well, vision planning is, makes it better for the uh, clubs to run, um, and it also makes for happier members. They're not as frustrated, and the president obviously is less frustrated. So vision introduced in our district in 2007 when five of our uh, district leaders were trained and authorized to facilitate the sessions and I was one of those leaders that was chosen and I was also asked to t uh, take on the reins at that point uh, of, of the visioning uh, program. It actually started in 2002 in Wisconsin when a Rotarian, Steve Wilcox, who still chairs the International Vision Facilitation Council, uh, and his PDG. Uh, he was asked to apply his uh, facilitation experience in leading a club through a strategic planning process. And the idea was born. Uh, it evolved from one facilitator to teams of three or four or five or six, depending on how many are involved that day, delivering a club vision event. And they actually perfected the initial uh, delivery from six and a half hours down to three and a half hours. We say three and a half to four hours. Well since that initial club first uh, facilitation back in 2002 it's gone through a second facilitation and that club has actually doubled in size over the course of these years. So outside of that district in Wisconsin in 2006 in October they started delivering uh, trainings in other districts and as I said in early 2007 our districts uh, three other districts along with our district were trained so they they at that uh, presented over 70 vision facilitator training workshops uh, themselves and they've trained over 1250 vision facilitators with over 90 districts participating. Now our district is one of those districts and uh, so what I'm doing is training you. There are different levels of training. We'll get into that at another time. Um, but uh, this, is a, this is your initial uh, indoctrination into the visioning facilitation program. So, there are multiple team member roles and responsibilities. We try to rotate these among our team members. Today I'm giving you a basic overview of each role and then I'll provide more detailed information uh, towards the end of this, of this uh, uh, webinar. Now, prior to um, any, any vision facilitation event, the uh, assignments are going to be made. And this a number of different roles for visioning event. Now that does not mean that we need 10 people at the event. We can do it with three people. We can do it with uh, four, five, or six people. Um, so s some people will take on multiple roles during the event. Uh, we just simply like to put a name to uh, each one of these uh, roles. So let's get started with a brief view of what the different roles are. So first let's start with the presenter or the educator. This is a typically a person who is strong in rotary knowledge and can present in a positive and enthusiastic fashion uh, representing the, the real rotary side of the entire facilitation. They're there to provide uh, any rotary clarification that is needed. They're able to answer rotary questions at all different levels. The presenter um, might be the person who presents the PowerPoint presentation at the beginning of the session. Um, they can do an overview of the session. They can be tying key rotary concepts um, that involve training into um, their comments as well. The facilitator extractor role. Uh, this requires a skill in communication with the ability to control the room. The facilitator manages what we call the U, which is the U-shape uh, 
tables so that the participants then are in a U shape, so we call it the U. So the facilitator uh, manages the U uh, through their dialogue and helps the club members, helps drawing them out um, their different ideas, but they do it in a respectful and abbreviated fashion. So their ability to involve all the participants, they've got to control the room, they are able to reflect and reword the thoughts that are presented in a paraphrased format, and that assists the scribes, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, they try to instruct the members to become headline writers, so they take whatever concept they've written down in the in the writing exercise and actually create what's you know like a a bite, a, a news bite, or a headline. And the facilitator, as I said, has to keep order among all the participants, and they have to be able, if, if, if everything dies down, they have to be able to actually jump start the group uh, back involved in uh, sharing their information. The facilitator is a person who lays down the rules of the road, so to speak, uh, at, at uh, the beginning of the extraction segment. Uh, and then um, the facilitators also, um, they don't impart any of their opinions into the process. We're not here to give our ideas and our concepts and our opinions. We're here strictly to facilitate their club in their ideas and their opinions and clarify any rotary facts and then assist the club in coming to um, a consensus. So there's a few ways to move the discussion along. If you happen to be the facilitator, you can create a parking lot, which is simply a um, one of the wall charts where you um, have the scribes post ideas that you don't want to uh, address at that particular moment because they'll take you off task. And hopefully you'll get able, be able to get back to them at some point uh, during the session. So there you say, you know, we'll get back to this if we have time later. Lots of times you put it on the parking lot, uh, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you just say, we'll get back to this later, remind me. Sometimes you might have to say, you know, you guys are, the two of you are having a great discussion or the three of you are having a great discussion. Uh, it's, it, uh, I encourage you to continue at a break time, but we've got to move forward with, uh, with what we're doing here or we'll be here all day. Um, you might also suggest that they uh, add something to an agenda or a board meeting discussion. So take it back to the club and discuss it, discuss it there. And one of the biggest things that the facilitator needs to do is continually remind them not to get hung up on the details of any particular idea. Right now we're focusing on the big picture and just it's a reminder you have to occasionally remind them because they do get very excited sometimes and, and want to get into all the details. The scribes and the flip charters, they need to, as a team to capture, they must be able to really be able to listen intently and then translate what, what can be a, a kind of long answer sometimes and uh, capture it into a 10 to a 12-word uh, uh, idea, uh, double check back with, with the person to make sure you've, you, you have um, captured the idea with their intent. Um, these scribes in the flip uh, charters need to be able to write clearly. Uh, uh, in other words, you know, other people have to be able to read it. <laughs> um, but they also need to be able to synthesize the information a little bit. So they list the complex answers and the distill information into what essentially become long bullet points. Um, the, the scribes will be creating charts. Um, with four inch rows and four inch voting boxes. I will show that to you a bit later. It's relatively easy to do in uh, something that in the live in our live training we'll, we'll, we'll be going through. They're, they're also the ones who manage the, the whole charting process. They, they put the numbers on all the pages. Um, they can use abbreviation and acronyms, but only if everybody understands what they mean. Um, they keep the charts uh, in order and in certain groupings. We have runners who uh, pick up the charts uh, as the scribes are, are done with them, so the scribes can immediately move on to another page, and then the runner actually is the one who manages the groupings on, as they paste them on the wall. And um, the scribes will also occasionally um, assist the extractor in uh, making sure that they have the information written down uh, correctly. 
the scribes alternate uh, writing down the information and the reason that they do that. So, so one idea will go to the left scribe, the next idea will go to the right scribe. Why do we do that? So that the scribe has enough time to actually write down the intent of the comment uh, without getting caught up in what the next uh, item is. So that's what the, the rotating back and forth is. The scribes only use blue and black markers. Uh, red, orange, and green markers are used later on. Uh, red and orange for the synthesizer. We use green for um, a portion of, of closing down some of the areas uh, as, as the voting continues. All right. The next one is the synthesizer or summarizer. Their role is to synthesize or summarize a, a, a group of bullet points into one focus area. So, so um, several different messages that they can actually um, synthesize down into uh, different focus areas. They're going to be looking for patterns in the in the uh, concepts that are voted on. Um, they're they're going to um, be bringing ideas from different uh, charts uh, areas. Uh, they're going to use their observations to actually bring those ideas uh, to life for the for the club members sitting there. Um, they're they have to have the ability to. Um, see the see the future of the club and and uh, help the members uh, see that future with enthusiasm they have to have the ability to draft a mission or a vision statement on the fly might not be what the club's going to end up with but at least gives them an idea of what they could be using uh, they also have to be able to manage the input of the other facilitators uh, during the summary phase because we'll be actually giving uh, our input uh, in of course, they're going to have to manage, you know, our group of cats, herd, herd our group of cats together, uh, just like they did with the, with members. So, as a for, for instance, um, using the highest uh, dot voted elements of club attributes and what the club stands for, these are two areas that they'll be voting on. Uh, the summarizer uh, might. Um, just on the fly create a vision statement for the Rotary Club just as an example of how they could connect the statements of the visioning session with a with a future club vision statement so uh, it doesn't have to be perfect it just has to be uh, an idea of what uh, the club might be able to put together so prior to a visioning session we send out a survey to the uh, club uh, person we're connecting with in the club and we ask them to send that out to all of their members uh, and return it to us at least a week prior to the visioning session so that we can collate it and um, evaluate it. It's a nine page survey that goes into all different aspects of the club functions and service, their fundraising, um, their uh, Rotary Foundation giving. Uh, it, every individual person in that club's uh, perception of how the club is today. Uh, it's incredibly useful for us as we uh, begin working with the club during the vision facilitation session. It gives us an, an idea of where they are and what some of their issues might be. We don't bring any of this up, but it is uh, there for us uh, to rely upon as, as we um, begin listening to the club and we might use some of that information to help without saying the information, just knowing the information, it helps us draw out uh, what those concepts were presented to us. It also allows every member of the club to have a voice uh, in the process, uh, to be participatory in the process, mainly because not every club member is going to show up at the visioning, uh, vision facilitation. And so uh, it's, a, it's a way of from the get-go uh, involving uh, the members of the club. So, what is a typical event schedule like? This is it. We um, adjust the time frames based on the time frames of the particular club's facilitation, uh, but uh, we don't change the order. We don't change uh, the time. So, for instance, the summary has 10 minutes for the summary. The dot exercise, 15 minutes uh, for each exercise with a 10 minute break. Those things don't change. It's just what time they happen that changes. So we start with dinner, socializing, um, the room the room set up. We do an, the introduction and the PowerPoint. 
we do the instructions for the writing exercise, then we go into the actual facilitation. You can see that we've got an hour and 15 minutes set aside for that because it does take time. Then we do the voting exercise. The summarizer synthesizer comes in, does their job. At the end, we will uh, do conclusions and uh, help them get a, uh, an action plan uh, of items uh, that they need to take care of uh, within the next month or so. And then we adjourn. So, the team arrives a minimum of 30 minutes before the members are due to show up. Why do we do that? Well, we might need to be doing some rearranging of the room setup. Um, we might be, have to figure out where the charts, uh, wall charts are going to be hung on the windows or the walls or, you know, whatever. We need to make sure that the, the technology is set up, the um, uh, laptop and the projector and the screen that all of that's set up and that it's working. Uh, and that our PowerPoint is loaded up on it. Uh, we need to set up the uh, team table in the back and then we need to uh, answer, I need to answer any questions from the team members and we need to review the duties with the team members. Make, just make sure that we're all uh, ready and set to go before we get started. Uh, the uh, club is re uh, required to uh, cr uh, prepare tent cards for us and so we'll want to have some felt pens laying around so that the individuals can put their names legibly on the tent cards. Uh, I talked about the parking lot so we may want to have one, one, uh, one piece of paper up that says parking lot on it. Uh, and then it's important that we meet and greet all of the Rotarians. So we want all of this done before the Rotarians arrive. We want to be at the door meeting each one of them and greeting them so that they're comfortable with us as we begin to do the facilitation and we're not just you know some strangers. We also might have to condense the group so they may have tables set up for 25 people but only 15 people actually show up. So as they arrive we want to sort of try to condense them into a certain area uh, so that there aren't a lot of empty seats around and we may even uh, want to remove a table or two depending on uh, you know, how many people actually show up. So the vision facilitation team will be introduced um, uh, by uh, the club president usually and some opening remarks are going to be made um, uh, by the introducer. So some of those opening remarks could be things like, there are only five questions we need to answer when engaged in planning. Whether we're laying out long-range plans for our own organization or business or wondering about our next family vacation. There are five things we should want to know. Who are we? If it's a family vacation, it's a family. Where are we going? Well, let's say we're going to Hawaii. All right. Uh, where do we want to be? Well, we want to be in a, a, a hotel that does uh, allows you to have your own kitchen because we're taking the kids with us. Um, how will we get there? Well, from LAX on a plane usually for around here. And how will we know when we've arrived? Well, that's easy. If you're on a plane, you've arrived. Okay. So as a family vacation, quick, quick way of going through that. So. Today, the vision session is going to focus on only one of these questions. Where do we want to be? Question number three. So, for instance, um, we're, we're a Rotary Club chartered in 1962. We have 43 members. We can describe, well, this is the who are we. We're going to go through the other, other items to say that we know them. So, we're a Rotary Club chartered in 1962. We have 43 members. We can describe our general demographics as median age of 68. 40% female, 60% male, with an average um, of 15 years in Rotary. You get the idea, okay? So we also we, we know where we are. The, uh, the community we serve is Costa Mesa. Our dominant programs include our youth services program, helping the homeless, mentoring students, and our dental screening. A lot of this information we're going to have from the information on that nine-page survey. You don't say that out loud. But today we're tasked to answer the question, where do we want to be? And to facilitate and expedite your responses to the question, we're going to have you imagine and describe your club, not as it is today, but as it has become. Not as it is today, but as it has become. 
you're going to be looking five years into the future and looking back to see how things have changed over the last five years and what you have accomplished over the last five years. So as you begin this process, you're going to be in the year 2019 and you're going to be talking about all of the different things that you've accomplished over the five years. So facilitator then will continue with, you were asked to fill out a questionnaire prior to our meeting today that helps us to understand where you are today. It's a just a virtual snapshot of your club today. The process that we're going to go through today is going to have a significant impact on membership retention and recruiting. And it's important that every member of your club can passionately describe what this club stands for and why they belong to it. If they can't do it, they lose the ability to get other people interested when they have the opportunity to speak to them about Rotary. So why should clubs do planning? Well, a challenge for many clubs is that they've just simply lost their focus. They become reactive to all the different requests that they receive. But when they have a vision and a focus, it allows them to be proactive without picking up only those requests that fall into their focus. I'm sorry, what they'll be doing is picking up only the requests that happen to fall into their focus areas. What that does is plans to ensure the future of their clubs. All right, the future doesn't come to us. We create the future. All right, the future doesn't come to us. It doesn't just appear. We have to create a plan in order to get to that future. So why should clubs do planning? Clubs should plan to ensure the future of their club to be able to serve development across boundaries both local and worldwide and generations to come. So now the introducer says something like, I'd like to conduct a tenure check among all of you. We just want to know how long each of you has been involved in Rotary. So after saying your name, tell me if it's you know how long if it's in months or in years but then we also want to know if you've been a member of the Rotary family in other parts of the country or for that matter the world okay so now the Rotary clubs inter uh, members introduce themselves including how long they've been in Rotary and any offices that they've held it's sometimes beneficial to have a slide up like this too so they can remember as they introduce themselves, um, the team members are going to take some notes about what they're telling, what they're saying out loud. We really want to look for, um, specifically for past presidents, for president-elects, and for president nominees. Um, those people are, are the leaders, and you want to really have some idea of who they are. You might even take a marker uh, and write down these titles on their name um, cards, their tent table tents. And this will help you remember later during uh, the extraction process who those folks are. By, that, by their responses, you're going to be able to discern how deep their individual experiences are. You're going to use that information also to um, make your explanation and examples of Rotary programs or activities match the uh, level of experience of those present, the Rotary experience of those presents. And you're going to be able to identify the most experienced members for any counsel and advice that they can bring to the um, requisite ac action plans that um, are going to be concluding uh, the session later on. So the PowerPoint presentation is now going to be given by the presenter. I'm going to be going through this kind of rapidly to conserve time. And it's, it is possible that the uh, members could still be eating during this time, and that's, and that's fine, as long as they're paying attention while they're eating and not chit-chatting. So we begin with the rules of the room. This seems, you know, kind of silly and ordinary, but these rules are critical to make sure that the facilitation is done properly. So you're going to walk through, you know, turn off your cell phones and take them away. From, no, no cell phones on the table. No interruptions, basically. Where, tell them where the bathrooms are located. Let them know that we will have scheduled scheduled breaks and that we only want them to leave the room during those breaks unless there's an emergency. 
critically critical that they know that there are no bad ideas that we want to hear everyone's ideas um, uh, we want everybody to respect each other no downplaying of, uh, of one another's ideas uh, only one person speaking at a time uh, part of that respect is not speaking over each other and also we want to hear them so we ask that they uh, when they're when they're presenting their idea to us that that we they speak up so that not only we can hear them but that the scribes can hear them as well with us without us repeating everything so if you don't know where you're going chances are you'll end up someplace else Yogi Berra said one of his famous quotes Hopefully, we can all end up at the same point at the conclusion of our visioning event. That's really what it's all about, focusing everyone down to the same point. Now, this picture is not us. Uh, uh, we'll eliminate this slide until we have a picture of us. Uh, but we would normally say here are the members of the district vision facilitation team. We only have some of those members uh, here with, working with us today on this program. So what is a club vision? It's a living management tool. It defines a shared commitment among those present today that you'll be able to share and, and take back to the rest of your club members uh, in time, not right away. There's a process we have to go through. Provided it's a, a long-term direction, our hope is that your planning will go out five years to 2019 and provide a framework to establish goals and objectives and optimize the resources that are not just here in the room amongst you folks but internationally as well. When any team has their oars in the water and is pulling in the same direction the organization is propelled forward. Now you all know what would happen if one of those folks stopped stopped rowing they could end up in circles so this is a visual that we want you to try and keep in mind our objective today to, is to ensure that your oars are in the water and that they're engaged in unison toward common goals with good planning tonight we'll be able to help you avoid this mousetrap So why does a club need a plan? Well, you all know that we replace all of our officers all, th all across the board annually and it really hasn't been shown to be effective or efficient. We need to begin to create multi-year coordinated plans that provide for greater continuity, consistency, and consensus. And that it encourages new leaders to step forward because they know what the plan is so they're not afraid to take that step of leadership. Pardon my, my dog barking. <laughs> so the continuity from year to year in our programs and services is really what makes our organization strong. You can see with consensus you're building on each year until you have built to the the success that you're looking for in your plan. It includes annual plans, projects, and programs. We also want to encourage our members to participate in programs that are outside of our clubs, that go beyond our clubs. These programs will enrich their rotary experience and ultimately help in retention in our clubs. So some things that the, your members might consider and you all might consider is being a part of the district training team. All of these folks are here today are part of the district training team. You might want to be on other district committees or be chairs of district committees. You might want to participate in the district conference. You know, go and meet other members. Uh, you could you could you could simply go and visit other clubs. That would open your eyes as to, you know, what other clubs are doing. It's quite interesting. Every club has its own culture. And ultimately, we'd love to see you at a Rotary International Convention where you really get a worldwide view of what Rotary is all about and it completely uh, opens, your, opens your mind. And you make great friends. Now, through the club leadership plan, effective clubs are able to sustain and increase membership, implement successful service projects, 
support the Rotary Foundation, and develop leaders beyond the club level like our governor, Mr. Vanek. So solid organizations employ these steps to a solid action plan. The visioning exercise that we're going to present today starts out the cycle toward long-range plan that your club can put into practice for years to come. The clarity that will come from this process will provide the alignment within your club of activities and direction promoting membership strength in retention and growth. So you can see it's a it's a cycle. Now this is the Rotary International Strategic Plan that was adopted for 2010 to 2013. As a, uh, the facilitator of the PowerPoint, you can actually uh, read through each one of these areas. Um, you'll see that uh, the five uh, strengths are service, fellowship, diversity, integrity, and leadership. Those are along the bottom. And then there's uh, three focus areas, uh, support and strengthen clubs, focus and increase humanitarian service, and enhance public image and awareness. And uh, then you have the uh, vision statement, a worldwide network of inspired individuals who translate their passions into relevant social causes to change lives and communities. You can use that. It'd be better if you created your own. But that's our eyes vision plan. That's that's the message that we want to get out to the rest of the world. So you can understand how uh, the uh, visioning process um, actually blends well into this uh, the RI strategic plan. So the three priorities, the ones that were across the top of that wheel, support and strengthen clubs, focus and increase humanitarian service, and enhance public image and awareness. These are the three priorities. Well, if you look at support and strengthen clubs, you're going to see pretty much what we're doing here today. Foster club innovation and flexibility, balance the activities in all four avenues of service, promote membership diversity, improve the member retention and recruitment, develop leaders, extend rotary, which means uh, creating satellite clubs and new clubs, and encourage strategic planning at club and district levels. By the way, our district has its own strategic plan as well. The second column, focus and increase humanitarian service. These are uh, things that will naturally happen as we go through the visioning process with all the different service areas. And the last one, enhance public image and awareness. We will be doing uh, that uh, by virtue of this plan because we will be creating uh, a vision statement, mission statements, elevator speeches and that kind of stuff and then um, suggesting uh, that you get a press release out and things like that. That comes towards the end. But we're going to be working in all three of these uh, priorities and you can see how they intermingle amongst each other. So this shows you uh, Rotary ha happens at the club level. It's a flow of information from the clubs to the district to Rotary International. Um, um, but club, clubs are at the top of this, of this triangle. It's an inverted triangle for that reason because clubs are where it happens. Nothing is dictated by the district or RI. Every club is, is an independent entity. Uh, and just has to follow their bylaws and constitution that have been approved by Rotary International for them to follow. So what this allows is that every club is is incredibly different uh, and they have their own culture just within our district but oh my goodness if you go worldwide amazing but or if you go to a neighboring district um, absolutely incredible differences in cultures. So that's important that everybody understand that it's everything happens at the club level in Rotary. So planning at the district level, well, the governor line has an advisory board. The governor has an advisory board. And this advisory board provides advice and counsel to the governor and the governor line 
in all the matters that um, uh, regard with uh, general policies for the district, uh, general practices, and then also in the operation and administration of our district. And this, as I said, there, we have a strategic plan and it includes multi-year planning, which is why the members include the sitting district governor, the district governor-elect, the district governor nominee. So right now this would be Jim Paddock, Kevin Padilla, and Ray Sanford. Also, executive assistant to the district governor that has his executive team, uh, so they would participate in the advisory board. Three immediate past district governors, so that um, that would include uh, Ray Shire, Jim Lorman, and Greg Owen. I think could be wrong, but I think so. And then two additional past district governors that are selected uh, by the district governor. Um, also, the district governor will select four Rotarians to participate on the advisory board. Folks that are going to be involved in the advisory board but not in a voting fashion would be the district office administrator, right now that's Shane, uh, the finance committee chair, right, um, not sure who that is, the district treasurer which is Helen Maxwell and the district secretary I think is Ed Hardenberg. Um, I could be wrong on some of those folks but to give you an idea. These folks, this committee, uh, advisory committee meets quarterly, but they can meet more often if the district governor um, asks if he needs some advice on some, a particular subject and wants, wants to meet. So who chairs this? The district governor once removed. So that would be Jim Lorman. Um, so that is the governor's advisory board. So when you get to the club level, we want an advisory board very similar to that. So we call that the President's Development Council. This is one way that we help achieve um, continuity through the years by having uh, this, this similar team of present, past, and future leaders. These folks are going to be working together uh, to maintain 80% consistency of programs within our clubs. So the membership would include the sitting president, president-elect and a president-elect nominee if you have one. Hopefully by instituting this program you'll end up with a president-elect nominee. And also three immediate past presidents. So it gives you a, a six-year span of continuity if you end up with a, a president-elect nominee. So they're going to meet quarterly or every third month and the immediate past president is going to chair the President's Development Council. So the President's Development Council um, meeting quarterly, what, what are they going to talk about? Well, here's some ideas, all right? Uh, every August they might review the long-range plan um, and also, um, also maybe fundraising and financing August and November. In February they might start with some initial budget discussions and the finances and then in May do a final budget and the finances. And, you know, other topics in here, um, that they can actually discuss all of those topics at the same meeting. You don't have to only have one topic. So uh, it just gives you a general um, idea of some sample agenda topics for the President's Development Council. So we don't leave a lot to, uh, to question in this program. So the club leadership plan. Um, since 2001, clubs of Rotary uh, have been testing and implementing the club leadership plan. In fact, um, our club, our uh, Raj McGonigal and myself were on the club leadership plan. Uh, we, were, we were the chairs of the club leadership plan committee when it first uh, arrived. Uh, 2001 was the pilot program at the um, Centennial Convention in um, 2005, Roger and I were both introduced to this and we brought it back to the district to begin implementing. The club leadership plan has been embraced by Rotary International as an approach to club administration. Now, any uh, new uh, bylaws uh, for, for new clubs or if you want to completely redo your bylaws, so this is what you're going to find are the um, club leadership plan uh, set up. I'm going to show you how that works. So why a club leadership plan? Well, it develops a long-range plan, it simplifies the committee structure, and it involves all the club members. So um, as presidents uh, coming in, at uh, either in President-elect's uh, uh, training, uh, uh, pre-PETS training, or at PETS, they will, they will actually um, end up getting this uh, brochure called Be a Vibrant Club. 
So, ship plan is vital uh, to the stability, the growth, and the success of Rotary during our second century of service. It's based on the practices of successful Rotary clubs, and its purpose is to strengthen Rotary at the club level by providing the administrative framework of an effective club. Having been tested for five years prior to bringing it out to the rest of us. There's nine steps for implementing the club leadership plan. The two first two steps are highlighted in red because that's what we're going to be working on today. But you can see uh, all of the other uh, seven items are incredibly uh, important in having uh, a vital and effective Rotary Club, including a comprehensive training plan. As a training director, I would love to see a um, a uh, training director in each club as well that, that works with me uh, to get training into the club level. Just a side note. So here are the recommended standing committees in the club leadership plan. You have the club board, and then it's broken down into five uh, committees. They can be um, directors, or you can have directors uh, at large that are part of the that are part of the voting board. So you have club administration that would cover uh, your programs, your sergeant of arms, uh, secretary, treasurer, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, setting up the room, sergeant of arms. I think I said all that kind of stuff. Club public relations, obviously we know what, what that is in terms of uh, branding, in terms of Facebooking, websiting, um, uh, press releases, you know, getting our information out into the public in any way possible. Membership, not sure we have any questions about what membership involves. Service projects, so some people have taken the service projects and have broken it out into the um, uh, areas of uh, youth service, international service, vocational service, and community service. So they can have four sub chairs underneath that uh, with the service projects chair um, maybe being the calendar coordinator, uh, you know, so that nobody's overstepping each other. And then reporting up to the to the board uh, as to what's actually going on in all the different areas. And then I don't think we have a lot of questions about what the Rotary Foundation um, area is all about either. That would include the grants and giving and everything. So this plan, it replaces uh, the recommended committee structure previously that had 18 club committees. You can obviously appoint other committees as needed on an annual basis. Uh, and. Um, under the, under the club leadership plan, committee assignments are made to ensure continuity. So what do we mean by that? Well, you have a chair, you have the immediate past chair, and you have the incoming chair. So each position is a one-year position, as it should be, uh, so that we are getting, um, bringing leaders up to, the, up to the board level and also getting them that experience and also bringing in new ideas. But, but then we still have the advice of the people that are you know, have done it previously to so that you know if any questions are right there to help. So, so this is the recommended standing committees. Um, now, if you have a standard Rotary club, uh, mid-sized club, you know, 40, 50, 60, up to up to 75 or 80 members, this would be your ideal um, Rotary club uh, committee. Uh, set up. So you can see underneath each of the five areas you have all of the different things that we were just discussing. Now, it gets a little crazy when you have a large club. So um, uh, large clubs, we talk about 80 members or more, they're going to have a lot more complex structures because of the large membership. They, they want to get as many people involved as possible. They do have a lot more going on because they do have so many people involved. So their structure would look more like this. And for a small Rotary Club, which is the average Rotary Club across uh, the world, um, mid to high 20s, 20s to 30 members, um, this is the standard uh, organizational structure that is most helpful for them. So Paul Harris said, Rotary is not an organization for retrospection. 
It is rather one whose worth and purpose. Well, you know what? I'm saying the wrong thing. Together we can make Rotary the best it has ever been as we enter our second century of service. So this is part of the Rotary International Strategic Plan. Now we're going to get Paul Harris's quote, which is that Rotary is not an organization for retrospection. It is rather one whose worth and purpose lie in future activity rather than past performance. So that's kind of what we're getting at here with, with, with this uh, vision facilitation. Yeah. We want you to be bold. We want you to think outside of the box as you move through this process. We, we really want you to suspend your practical side and allow yourself to really dream those big dreams. And trust that the, the practical sorting process is going to come later. Okay. So now it's five years out. It's the year 2019. So this is the end of the PowerPoint presentation. And then the uh, facilitator um, brings in the, uh, the vision writing exercise. So the facilitator during the PowerPoint says something like, during the PowerPoint presentation, three key concepts were offered. So what were these three concepts? Any ideas? I'll give you a hint. They all begin with C. So you, they're going to continue to draw out from the group the three concepts, which are continuity, consistency, and consensus. Now, this one of the scribes is going to then draw an equilateral triangle, and they're going to put continuity and consistency on the two sides and consensus um, at the base. So um, the facilitator can then review um, the um, Diagonal lines, continuity, and consistency. Uh, obviously, we showed you the stepladder uh, in the in the uh, PowerPoint presentation. That's what's going to get us moving up the stepladder, but it's nothing without the consensus to the club. So everybody has to be working in the same direction. That's that rowboat that we showed you. And that's why consensus is at the base of the triangle, because it's the basis for any of this moving forward. So, this should show you why this is a group undertaking and why it has to be very participative um, during the course of the program today. Okay? We want you to take a moment to clear your minds, take a deep breath. Get the clutter out of your left brain from the busy days that you've had so far. Take a, take a deep breath right now and relax. In a moment, you're going to be asked to imagine the future, to place yourself five years from today and look back on the success of your Rotary Club over the last five years. And again, you're going to be asked to see your club not as it is, but as it has become over the last five years. So consider this. If you reach for the stars, you may not grasp one, but you're not going to come up with a handful of mud either. So to help you focus on the next decade, in a few minutes, we're going to distribute an, uh, distribute an exercise that you're going to be asked to complete. Just do the best you can in the time allotted. We want you to be open, innovative, and imaginative. Everything you ever wanted your Rotary Club to be. Now, we're going to hold the distribution of the exercise until we uh, read the complete cover sheet to the participants. While reading, you want to be slow, deliberate, you want to emphasize the directions, especially those directions that describe how they must position themselves five years out and look back um, to, to uh, determine uh, what, they've, what they've been accomplished. So I'm going to read you the first page of the vision exercise now. So the month is September for this visioning, particular one we're talking about, the years. Uh, 2019, five years out. The president of Rotary International is personally inviting you to submit your club for a prospective receipt of an inaugural Distinguished Club Medallion. The RI president will present only three clubs in the entire world with this award at, as gold, silver, and bronze levels. 
your qualifications and subsequent evaluation for this award will be judged solely on the accomplishments and successes your club has had in the last five years. And here is the president's invitation. I would like you to consider you and your club for my first ever Distinguished Club Medallion. To do so, I have one requirement. That your introductory statement to the president begin like this. Our exceptional blend of vision and membership attributes, projects and activities merits the gold Distinguished Club Medallion because. Then list your accomplishments and successes that you've enjoyed in the past five years with the following words. Proceed to share in specific details using bullet points, sound bites, or headlines what has happened in your club and why you deserve the award. Engage in unabashed self-promotion. Do your own version of show and tell or bring and brag. Words like I will, I hope, I intend must not appear in your writing. You want to share what you have actually accomplished, describing with an action verb. So you need to visualize this. Include also your attitudes and feelings, perspectives and insights that you have about contributing to the favorable future of your club members and their community. You need to complete this exercise within the next 30 minutes. Now again, we want you to place yourself fully in the future and you will be looking back and reporting to the RI president. So what are the categories that we're going to be having you look at during this exercise? What does your club stand for? Right? That, that can sometimes be a difficult one, but what you want your club to stand for in the next five years. The club size and attributes. How large do you want your club to be in five years? And what are the attributes? Okay. What is the mixture of male and female? What is the diversity? What are the uh, median age? Right? You're going to be talking about uh, your club administration, vocational service, community service, youth service, and international service. Those are all pretty straightforward things that you've done in those areas over the last five years. You're also going to be talking about fundraisers. Now, these can be fundraisers that you currently have that are going to be continuing on. Uh, or it can be brand new fundraisers that you've always thought you wanted your club to do but never really had the voice to say it out loud. Today's the day. Also, uh, Rotary Foundation fundraising, what your goals are for your club in five years. And then um, you're going to be talking about the, the, how, the, how the public s sees your club. So what, your, what the image is that you're um, providing out to the public. So those are the areas. They're not scary. <laughs> So now you set the timer for 50, uh, 30 minutes. You're going to give a 15-minute and a 5-minute warning uh, before you complete this exercise so that those uh, folks that are uh, taking a little bit longer can, can gauge uh, how much they can get done in that time. Uh, if, the people, if some of the people finish early, they can quietly leave the room and take a short break, but it does have to be quiet. We, uh, we don't want to interrupt anyone's uh, train of thought or concentration if they're still writing. So that has to be uh, put up front very clearly. And then uh, when the 30 minutes is up, you're going to allow for a short stretch break and then reconvene the group to begin the extraction process. The extractor tells the club their thoughts will be recorded using two scribes who will alternately be writing paraphrased notes on the flip charts. Remember I said rotating back and forth and they're going to be paraphrasing them. The switching off is to save time. We went over that earlier. The extractor plays a pivotal role in harnessing the feedback from the members and drawing out their thoughts and also in helping the scribes to paraphrase things when needed. The extractors must instruct the group to only speak one at a time and to respect the responses of the individual talking. They should also explain to the group how we're looking for their written ideas, but they need to deliver them as a headline or a soundbite. 
And then the extractor works with the scribes uh, to make sure that the proper pace and, and that the content interpretation is correct. They can repeat or summarize ideas uh, to help the scribe in, in getting them down on the paper. The extractor is the one who continually suggests that the participants rephrase their ideas into tighter and shorter statements, but you never want to insert your opinion into that. You just want to try and condense it, always getting their agreement that that condensation, it, it, it still holds their intent. The process of drawing out the feedback will mean that the scribes are trying to grab the concept in the least number of words and then writing them on the flip chart. Sometimes the club members are going to get excited about certain subjects and they're going to start talking over each other and talking rapidly. As the facilitator, you must manage this so that the scribes can get down the information. It's great to have excited members, but you really need to remind them that the scribes are working rapidly and, and hard to try and get down the information so if they could uh, just say one, you know, not talk over each other but maintain their excitement, that would be great. The scribes collect points for each of the areas of the written exercise and they should again use blue or black markers to record. The red uh, markers are only to be used by the synthesizer. The facilitators are not going to ask the scribes to prioritize or discuss or debate anything at this point. It's not a brainstorming or discussion session. Members simply share with the group what they've written for each of their exercise questions. The scribes collect this information on the flip charts one topic at a time. It's that simple. The scribe is going to be in charge of putting a heading on the top of the flip chart for the area that that you're collecting and also uh, placing a number in the upper right hand corner. The facilitator will go around the room asking the club members for what they view as what their, for instance their, their club stands for in the community. The facilitator is going to avoid starting at one end of the room and moving on to the very next person and asking for input. But instead, they're going to be moving around the room in no particular order, getting various uh, people and various sides of the room, uh, uh, participating uh, however the information comes out. The scribes are going to keep filling the flip charts with headers and numbers until they've captured everything um, from the club members' exercises. The purpose of the written exercise is to have each member independently write down their perspective of their club. It's not a group fill-in. So that's important. We're not, we're not getting a consensus at this point. We want all the ideas down on paper. So once all the inf uh, information and feedback is on the flip charts, then the exercises that the folks have filled out, they can be thrown away or they can keep them, whatever they want to do. We're not going to be using them again in today's facilitation. The objective is to get the information independently created, because they did it all by themselves. There was no chit-chatting during the writing exercise. And then uh, collect it as a group, all within the time frame that, that you have for the uh, facilitation portion of this. The scribe's also going to uh, consolidate uh, any duplicates in a category while gathering the feedback, but before they can consolidate anything, they, um, they have to request from the uh, second person if consolidating it would actually provide with the same intent, if it's okay with them to do that. And if not, then have them clarify what the difference is uh, between what was previously said and what they're saying now and write it down. Uh, the club size flip chart um, is only going to be voted on in one round so for that particular one you're going to be writing things down a little bit differently. You're going to take all the responses from the club members as to club size and you're going to write them down in the order that you get them on the right hand side of the page. And then uh, before you tear the page off and give it to the runner you're going to uh, reorder them on the left-hand side of the page near where the voting boxes are uh, in descending order from the smallest number uh, to the biggest number. So this is a sheet is only voted on once and so uh, makes it a little easier to have everything in order. 
so one of the things that um, we'll be providing is some uh, painter's tape uh, that can be used to separate the categories so that when the folks are out voting, uh, they know that all of these sheets are with this category because, again, we're getting them from both scribes. We don't want any confusion. So once all of the categories have been completed, the group is going to get a break. And during the break time, the facilitation team is going to distribute the correct number of red and blue dots to each of the club members' seat. And they're going to write on the flip chart categories how many dots they can use for each category. And we'll provide that information. Voting is to distill the, all the different ideas down to the top three in each category. So it usually takes uh, two rounds to accomplish this. The first round uh, takes it down to about six or seven ideas, and then the second round actually distills it down to about three or four ideas. So you need to explain that they're going to vote with the blue dots first, and voting for their top three choices in each category as you've written on the wall charts. And you can actually show to them where the number is of how many dots they can use on each category. You're going to explain that there are two exceptions to the three dot voting. They'll only use one vote for club size and one vote for fundraising. They can only put uh, one dot on a line item. There's no grouping up. They like If they like one particular thing, they want to put all three dots there, not happening. It's going to be up to the team to keep an eye on this, just roaming the room, answering any questions, and really keeping an eye on, the, on that fact. You want to uh, suggest that the group uh, puts, you know, splits up into smaller groups and that they stand in front of a category before we get started with the voting. The idea is, is that uh, they will then move uh, uh, clockwise uh, as the voting begins and uh, they're going to move around the, the room from one category to the next. And by, by doing this, they're going to avoid all of them being on one item to begin with. It'll uh, speed up the time considerably, but it also then uh, allows them not to miss any of the categories, so they're not haphazardly, you know, going from this one to the other one across the room. Uh, nobody leaves the room or takes a break during this time, otherwise it'll take forever <laughs> to get it done. Um, and then again, as I said, the team members are going to help as needed uh, during this whole process. Now the second round of voting, um, after, the, after the first round, after the blue round, the facilitation team is going to cross out the items that have um, not very many votes, zero to you know three or four votes. And um, they want to reduce the choices to five to seven elements per category. Okay. So during the, the second round of voting, the red dots um, cannot be placed where there's been an X in the voting area. Otherwise, the same voting procedures um, are used. And the club size and fundraising uh, may or may not need a second round of votes. Um, in a large club, maybe yes. Uh, just depends. So you make that determination as a team. So if the dots seem to be falling into one very specific number with not very many uh, dissensions in a category, then also there's no need for a second vote on that particular category. If a smaller group's being facilitated, it may not even need a second round. So for instance, under a foundation, the small group might only offer four or five ideas. So in that case, you pull that one that doesn't need a second round. Synthesis and summarizing. So synthesis is the breaking down of the categories and drawing conclusions and summarizing. So the team members are going to go to each of the areas after the voting. They're going to count the second vote of dots, and they're going to identify the top three or four vote getters, typically by circling them. The synthesizer follows them with a red marker and underlines the key words under each one of those um, line items. And then once that's all completed, then the synthesizer is actually going to go around the room, give a verbal report on the top vote getters for each area. 
So the synthesizer wants to do this quickly with energy and passion. Um, they've they've underlined the item, so it should make it a lot easier as they go back and do this. They they want to be connecting key statements from the different wall charts of the different categories, so that they can uh, show any ideas that are interrelated. They're also going to make observations as to what seems to be evolving or trends or similarities uh, that come out of the voting process. Some clubs are going to begin to show a pattern, a theme, or a, a type of club characteristic that just pops out. And a good synthesizer is going to be able to catch on to this very easily. Now this is going to be also where the excitement increases for most of the club members and you might even hear some of them saying, ah, 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 right? If, they, if the excitement catches on though, some small groups or individuals may even start to formulate their elevator speech right on the spot. Now they can also get loud and so they may need to control that just a little bit. But do not take away the excitement. This is where you want the excitement. The club action plan. This is why this is why we're here, not just to let them go through this process and have all these ahas. We want them to be able to do something with it. So the ultimate objective of the, the three to four hour vision facilitation is to take clubs that have gotten so diverse in their beliefs and practices that they're basically rudderless to a focused consensus at the conclusion of the event. Right? So we take them from being rudderless to be having a focused consensus that they all agree upon and that they can move forward. So to conclude the vision facilitation, a, a basic action plan is necessary to keep the momentum and excitement going well beyond the visioning se session. Key actions must be identified along with the people responsible for the actions and a reasonable timeline set for the completion of the actions. The type of action plan that's generated from a club visioning session is very different from what many action plans you might be familiar with that come out of a two or three day strategic planning workshop. It's important not to get the two concepts confused. With visioning, the session is not focused as much on detailed outcomes as it is on the, the focused big, big, big picture. Dreaming of what we can be with no obstacles in our way no current reality taking us to task, and everyone in the room having the opportunity to offer up great ideas without repercussions. The actual strategy plan has not yet been created, nor will it be in this three to four hour event. Within a longer, more formal strategic planning event, we call it the Vision to Action Plan, the, the members can work together to develop a detailed tactical plan of action based on identified goals and objectives. We don't do that until a minimum of three months away from their visioning program. And only if the club wishes to go forward with this. It has been our experience that most clubs define detailed plans of action within a committee structure like a President's Development Council. And with this in mind, the next steps or actions are rather straightforward and are actually established even before the session begins. It all boils down to a handful of very important documentations and presentations. Keeping it simple allows the club to come away from their newly found vision with enthusiasm and excitement without that dread of taking on more tasks just to get it implemented. The club members can embrace their vision and later, after finishing up their handful of actions, move on to the more detailed creation of a more formal strategic plan, listing many tactical actions. Again, this is just an option for any club to consider. So there's five proposed actions that must result from this facilitation. These five things they have to do. Compile the facilitation wall charts, create a statement of purpose, for the club using all the information that was gathered uh, today. Schedule a club assembly to share what has happened and begin developing the action steps for a vision to action plan. Assemble the President's Development Council for a first meeting and choose a vision champion. So compiling, compiling the wall charts into a summary. 
the compilation of the, all the ideas posted on the walls during the vision session can be done pretty quickly well and it should be done while it's fresh in everyone's minds we're going to be providing a uh, spreadsheet a template Excel um, and so um, one of the members uh, volunteers to compile the spreadsheet. It's relatively easy to transfer the information from the actual wall charts onto the spreadsheet. And we can actually uh, show that at this point up on the on a pat on the PowerPoint if we want to. Then uh, once the, the Excel spreadsheet is completed with all the information in it, then this is then distributed to all the session participants so that they have a review of everything that went on. It's quite satisfying for them to get that back. And it's also emailed to the facilitation team coordinator, who will be me, uh, and I will be keeping that on file um, uh, as a, from a district standpoint, uh, so that if you ever lose it or you know somehow you need some clarification, then we've got something in our hands to work with uh, when when speaking to you. The creation of a statement of purpose or an elevator speech, a slogan, it could even be a mission statement or a vision statement. It's very close to the establishment of a club mission. It basically begins and explains why the club is in existence today, what the club stands for in their community, and it shares the unique personality that the club represents. It, it does not fit the personality of that particular club, then it's going to offer less meaning to the members. So you you know, every club doing a vision facilitation is going to come away uh, after going through this process, after you know, experiencing all of this, they're going to come away with their own uh, personality of their club. It's not that difficult to do. But having that spreadsheet is going to make it even easier for the folks that are working on this. This then becomes a new rallying point around which the club can make its decisions, recruit members and offer services. So as I said early on, uh, everything is then going to be focused towards what the club's statement of purpose is. If it doesn't fall within that statement of purpose, it gets rejected or the statement of purpose might need to be uh, uh, adjusted uh, to allow for it if it's something that uh, the majority of the club agrees with. I don't recommend that. Now, there's going to be a lot of enthusiasm that comes out of the vision consensus process. This writing exercise of the statement of purpose, it must be done within the next two to three weeks. And it has to be done, it has to be completed by folks that were um, a part of the um, uh, session and, and preferably by ones that were excited about uh, the session. Again, you're going to want to have that Excel spreadsheet to assist you in doing this. So scheduling a club assembly, um, club assemblies, some clubs may not have them. Uh, we um, require that one be scheduled within four to six weeks from our visioning event. A lot of times we um, require that a club uh, put that on their calendar prior to us uh, scheduling the visioning program or, or at the same time that we schedule the visioning uh, program. So why is it important um, for the club to hold the club assembly? Well. A lot of different ideas were written down, and if they're not shared, um, they're going to be forgotten. A lot of dreams and a lot of ideas. Once these ideas are documented, which is what is going to be done in that Excel spreadsheet, it's much easier to remember them and then easier to communicate them to others. So chances are the entire club is not going to participate in the vision facilitation. So the members that did not participate at the club assembly are going to become aware of uh, what went on. And the, and the different ideas that came out, what things were voted down, what things were voted uh, on but didn't receive enough votes, that kind of thing. They might even decide that they, maybe, maybe they missed out on something. Next time you do a vision facilitation, they'll want to be a part of it. So once all of these ideas are communicated and explained to, a, to all the others uh, that didn't participate, it's much easier to gain their understanding and buy-in on uh, everything, you know, your focus and your, your uh, vision. Once the entire club gets the buy-in, the club gains that consistency, continuity, and also an extended consensus. That's what we're looking for. Consistency, continuity, and consensus. At the grassroots le level, written intent pushes accountability. 
So that's why we're asking that things be written down because uh, the President's Development Council could be your accountability on it, your assistant governor, we could be your accountability. Um, you can provide you know, certain members of your club that are just there for accountability. It's hard for a club, a club to publicize something that they never intended to follow through with. So with this in mind, a catalyst for pushing this forward is to create the event, club assembly, with a set date where the vision and actions can be shared with the rest of the club, proudly, with enthusiasm, and with style. We found that if it's not done, again, as I said, within four to six weeks in the visioning session, that the excitement dies down and the daily tasks of running the Rotary Club take over. And this is all for naught. Assembly and a President's Development Council and, and um, take the time to explain this if the club's not familiar with the concept. Um, it's not mandatory, but it is one of the most effective ways to move a club forward and show continued progress beyond the visioning session. So why do we have a President's Development Council? Well, a, a Rotary Club board is a working board. What that means is it, it takes on the task of running a a nonprofit organization, the daily tasks, the weekly tasks, the monthly tasks, everything from paying its bills to um, putting people on committees to training new members, um, recruiting new members, setting up the next fundraising or social event. So who champions the future vision ideas and strategic initiatives and keeps the club on task? This is a highly specific goal in itself that's usually forgotten by most clubs. Other districts and clubs have formed separate committees to keep their eyes on the strategies and champion the initiatives for the future, and that's really all that this is. I want you to consider a President's Development Council made up of past presidents, current president, and future presidents. The number one obligation of this council is to help keep the strategic goals in front of the club and remind others of their continued commitment to get these done. Why do we need a club vision plan? Well, the effective implementation of the club vision plan requires a club consensus, which is accomplished at the vision session. The champion ensures that progress is made and that the actions incorporated into the working of the club. The role of the owner of the club vision plan, so to speak, the club vision champion, is to ensure that the vision created at the session is in the forefront and top of mind awareness as club leadership discusses annual goals and tactical projects throughout the year. While all club members are responsive, responsible for creating and helping to execute the actions and represent the new slogan, the club vision plan owner is the chief advocate to make sure progress is tracked, documented, and that the plans are actually being implemented. This champion documents any changes, updates them, and serves as the point person for the assistant governor and the visioning team with any further communication. If the club determines that a strategic committee will further develop strategies and tactical actions, the vision champion communicates directly with this committee and helps to support their efforts as well. So that would be if they plan on going to the vision to action plan. So in closing, we're going to thank the participants, their attendance and participation. We're going to recognize that they've given their time and energy to create a focus for the future of their club and in doing so have an impact on the future of their community. We've got about 10 different statements that can be chosen from. Anywhere between 1 to 10 statements can be included in the closing remarks. I'm going to go through those now. The first one, this Costa Mesa Rotary Club team has accomplished a tremendous amount tonight. In about four hours, you've brainstormed and reached consensus on a set of priorities for near and long-term action in each of the club service areas. This plan can and should be a platform for communicating with the whole club about the work you've done here. It can and should be what it means as a platform for short and long-term strategic and action plans. And it can and should be a way to help ensure continuity and consistency of focus and action into the future. 
It can and should be a recruiting tool. When all members can passionately and succinctly state what the club stands for and where it's going, recruiting becomes simply sharing the opportunity to participate. A press release should be issued to the community. Now that this club has seen a vision, there's a good chance that others within the community would like to be a part of that vision. So that's the first one. Here's the second one. As we close this session, let me ask you two questions. What doubts, worries, concerns, or reservations do you have about this evening's discussion of strategy? Now you need to listen to their responses if you're going to ask them the question. What excites or energizes you most about this evening's discussion of strategy? And again, listen and affirm their responses. That's number two. Number three. When you look at all of the activities that have been posted around the room, remember that not all will be accomplished in one year. For instance, year one may be researching what others in the community are doing in this area. Year two may be working with the school officials and uh, with a plan to start in year four. So you would pick up a, a specific topic and walk through it that way. Item number four. Rotary clubs doing work in all four avenues of service are well-balanced clubs. For instance, if you're only doing community service, then you just might be similar to any service organization in this area. A strong Rotary Club is not only active locally, but is active in other parts of the world and is active bringing the world to this community. Item number five. When you have a plan, it should make it easier for members to step into roles of leadership. Once they are aware that they don't have to figure out what will I do in my year in leadership, but that they are a steward of a long-range plan, it should make it more enticing for them to volunteer in a leadership role. Item number six. Once you've had some time to work on uh, assignment, assignment step number two, the mission and the vision, I strongly suggest that you issue a press release. This press release would tell the community that the Rotary Club has come together and will be working in the following areas in the year to come. Chances are good that there are people in the community that have an interest in those areas and might be looking for an opportunity to work with or join a group with the same vision. Item number seven. We're often asked how do we compare to other clubs. Of course, there are some commonalities between clubs, but it's always exciting to see the wall sheets completed because they reflect the culture of this club. And the culture in other clubs is really different. Item number eight. You've put up many great projects on the wall today. This absolutely ties back into your membership goal as you're going to need many, many people to accomplish these goals. Item number nine. Congratulations on choosing to attend today. In doing so, you've chosen to help ensure a stronger Rotary Club here in this community. When you chose to help strengthen your Rotary Club, you also chose to have an impact on the future of this community. So I applaud your efforts to make a difference in the community of Costa Mesa. Item number 10. In the very near future, a member of our team will be sharing with your club a few tools that will help you move forward, including a sample assembly presentation and a vision to action plan template. So those are different remarks that um, you would be choosing from uh, to add to your closing remarks. And when you're done then, you would turn um, turn it over to the club president for any final remarks that they might have. And then we're done. <laughs> so let's summarize what's involved in a visioning session. So we strive to present three core concepts during the vision facilitation. Club leadership plan and potential committee structure for their club, the RI strategic planning, and the concept of a president's development council along with uh, the nine steps to implement the club leadership plan, uh, Rotary uh, Beyond the Club, and um, club, a, a club mentorship program, which is the immediate past chair, chair, and incoming chair of a committee or of any position in the club. So this is a typical room setup with the tables in the U shape that I talked about earlier. You're going to have those two easels up at the front of the room. You can't really see them well, but they're prepared already with one line drawn down to the left and one line across the top uh, for the voting and the categories. 
You also will see at the top of the room there's a projector, there's a screen, uh, there's a laptop set up, I believe, over to, oh, up on the podium. All right. Um, and then each participant also has a table tent. You can see those on the table. Um, the club provides that along with a, some water, a pen, and a pad. All right. So this is what this is what the room's going to look like when we get started. Food's always until the participants are in the writing exercise. Never eat before then. We've got too much to do, and we don't want to be eating while they're eating. Now, alcohol in most districts isn't allowed. It's become a point of contention in our district. So what we decided that um, alcohol uh, can be consumed after the writing exercise has been completed with a two-drink maximum during the session. The team sets up in the back of the room, unless you are the person who is what we call up. Uh, and you're in front of the room for your portion of the event. And we do not um, want to interrupt anything that they're doing, so we are very, very quiet uh, back in the back of the room. If something has to be said, uh, a long conversation, we go out of the room. So here is um, a Rotary uh, facilitation, uh, vision facilitation person doing the uh, introduction. Um, and having the members go around, you'll see some of them are eating, all right? Here's um, a PowerPoint presentation being given. Uh, a little bit of food left on the tables. Most of it haven't been consumed because there's been plenty of time now. Here we have the writing exercise uh, being introduced. They're presenting the concept of it. This is the actual writing exercise taking place. Uh, you'll con you can see that there are no vision members at the front of the room or along the sides of the room. We are quietly in the back of the room and we are eating. <laughs> so here we have the facilitator on the left gathering the information, extracting it from the members. And we have two scribes at the front of the room. On the left hand side you'll see one scribe writing and one scribe uh, waiting for the next item to come up. Um, on the right hand side you'll see uh, the the scribe closest to us completing the thought while the one further away from us is just beginning a thought and that is the epitome of why we need to have two scribes. Now I don't recommend that they get down on their knees like that. There are chairs right behind them. If they would put a chair up there uh, they can actually sit in the chair to write uh, the lower part so they aren't hurting themselves. That's uh, optional. Then the dot voting begins. This is uh, giving an explanation as to how it works. It's very important. You wanna, you'll see that these are, are placed in groupings. Uh, they don't have the tape down between them, but so if you don't have tape, you can always place it just in the groupings. You want to make sure that you let them know that, uh, for instance, those four charts there in the center is one group. Uh, all the others have two charts uh, connecting them. So you want to go through and explain that. You want to explain how many um, dots they can put and, and where that number is listed on each category. So here's the blue dot round. That's how it begins and you'll see uh, there aren't too many people uh, at one particular uh, category. So they are moving, they're putting their dots on and then moving down to the next category in the clockwise fashion. Now you'll see this is the round two for the red dots and what you will see here in the in the closer picture are the X's being placed. So we don't cross out the concept because that concept needs to be uh, put in into the Excel spreadsheet but we do cross out the ones that they can no longer vote on. Now uh, those are the ones with the lower num lowest number of votes. You'll also see that you have red dots and blue dots in some of these squares. We don't want any dots being covered up because again the person filling in the Excel spreadsheet she needs to know how many of each color dots uh, were placed into those boxes. So that's part of what our team is going to do. We're going to be uh, kind of watching that uh, you know they're not placing more than one dot in a box and that they're not covering up other dots. This is the synthesis or summarizing of the charts being done. Two different folks uh, Doing, doing it gives you an idea of you know what, what they're doing. The 
the call to action is creating the action plan for moving the club forward and we do this before they leave the room. So names and completion dates are assigned to each area. So we talked about compiling, compiling the wall chart. So who's going to do that and when is it going to be done? That's putting everything in the Excel spreadsheet. We talked about creating a statement of purpose for the club. Uh, who's going to do that? I suggest a small grouping of folks, the ones that are the most excited about the process. And, and uh, we said two to three weeks to get that done. So it needs a drop dead, dead deadline as to when it's going to be done. Set up and lead a club forum or a club assembly to enroll the club uh, membership in the whole process. So uh, who's going to set it up and when is it going to be? Assemble a President's Development Council. Who's going to be in charge of assembling that and when is their first meeting going to be? And then choose a club vision champion. So who's going to be the one to own the plan? Who is it? And uh, when are they going to take hold of it? It, it may well be now. It may it, it you know it may not be until uh, the uh, club assembly, and maybe they they might even be a participant. You know, good idea to have them as a participant during the club assembly. So those are the five items that they're going to need to complete before they get to leave the room during the program. So here is um, our, our uh, closing. Um, the team's observations are going to be expressed uh, and, and we're going to be giving encouragement. As I read you some of those closing um, statements, we're going to be encouraging uh, them and uh, telling them what a great job that, you know, that they did uh, during this process. We're also going to be giving them a survey uh, at the end of the visioning session to complete. The questions in the survey are um, very um, open-ended and allow for comments. Um, it's a very simple, like a five-question survey, uh, and you'll actually get a copy of that uh, in some of the materials I'll be sending you. So, what are the steps? Because I'm sure you're very confused. I've gone over everything in a lot of detail. So, what are the steps in order for vision facilitation to happen? Well, first of all, like anything else, we have to promote the concept. Well, fortunately, uh, Governor Ray Shire, Governor Jim Paddock, Governor, um, um, Governor Elect, uh, Kevin Padilla, they're all on board with this process. I haven't spoken to uh, uh, Ray Sanford yet. I'm certain he'll be on board as well. So, fortunately, during their pre-pets um, uh, programs, uh, they are promoting the concept of the visioning. They're also promoting it at pets in the in the uh, to the president elects in the uh, governor time, and then they're also uh, promoting it to the president elects uh, during the district training assembly. So we get we get that promotion. Nothing to say that as a team we don't want to go out and start promoting it uh, to the clubs as well. Uh, so we can discuss different ways of doing that as well. Then we have the vision team coordination once someone says they want to have uh, the visioning process. And so um, as we grow our visioning team, uh, we'll have a vision team coordinator who will schedule um, the program uh, with the club and then also schedule which facilitators are available to participate in that day now. Typically I've been doing that, but we will be passing that along to another team member. The Rotary Vision Questionnaire, this is that nine-page uh, questionnaire that we send out ahead of time so that the, all the club members can participate in giving us uh, information about the club as it is right now. They get that back to us minimally a week before the event. And then we have the facilitation event. Uh, then we have some follow-up with the um, with the club, with the president, or with the champion, with the president's development council, whoever wants they determine is going to be doing some follow-up with us. Um, the AG, if the AG has participated or had, had been able to uh, watch the visioning process, they don't participate in it, um, they also could help do some follow-up um, or, or our team can do it as well. And then uh, the vision to action plan uh, program. This happens three months after the visioning event if they opt to do it. We engage the club leaders uh, in this event and it is a separate training altogether. So if we get a club that says they want to do that, then I'll be training people to help me with it. It's a, it's a pretty easy pro uh, process. Um, 
I put it in a lot of detail for you. So you want to use this webinar as a tool to uh, scroll back and forth and, and find the information you needed as you need it. So after taking uh, going through a visioning facilitation um, process, uh, we've had lots of uh, quotes from different Rotarians, but this was really a wonderful one. He said, thank you so much for the privilege of participating in the Rotary Vision exercise and, and dreaming big dreams. It was very well organized, empowering, motivating, and enriching. The areas of engaging our full membership, mentoring future leaders and doers, integrating and leveraging our collective expertise using multimedia technology resonated very well with me. So believe me, Rotarians love this process. Clubs move forward and are very well focused. Um, you'll, you'll see having gone through one, it's, it's empowering to us as well as the facilitators. All right, so I gave you a whole bunch of information. As I said, it's usually presented in a four-hour in-person training. Uh, when you get up and you, you try out some of these different roles, we're still going to need to do that with folks. I, I imagine there's going to be some questions. If you do have any, please either call me or uh, send me an email. I'm happy to answer those questions. And finally, I want to thank you for being on our training team for the time that you give to Rotary and for your service to Rotary and your community.